everyone, it's Sarah, and this is my service dog, Bailey. And Bailey is actually in the process of retiring from service work. Um, she is seven years old, and um, I was planning on retiring her at eight, um, but I had to start retiring her a little bit early um, because she had an injury in the last year. And that's part of the reason why I haven't made a video in a long time. So I just wanted to pop on and share a little bit about her retirement process and why she's retiring. So last year around January, we brought home about a four month old golden doodle puppy, which was not intended to be my service dog. Um, this is actually a dog that I was going to puppy raise for my older brother. Um, last year, my older brother got COVID and he was in the ICU for over 100 days and it had a really intense impact on him. And my family started planning for the type of assistance that he would need. Um, and part of that was considering how to prepare a service dog for him. And my immediate family didn't have the resources to puppy raise or to send a dog to a professional trainer for an extended period of time. And so I offered to puppy raise um, a puppy for him so that once my brother was out of the hospital, that we could hand over the puppy to them and they could work with a professional trainer to complete the puppy's training. Um, and so, in January, we got this puppy. It took Bailey a little bit to warm up to him, but once they became friends, they were really thick as thieves and playing all the time and cuddling together. Um, they were really best friends. And one day they were playing at the park and out of nowhere, Bailey just falls to the ground screaming in pain. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where she was hurt. All I knew was that I needed to get the two dogs that I had at the park with me home safely so that I could inspect her and see what was happening. Um, and once Bailey stopped screaming and it took about a minute and a half because she was in so much pain, um, she stood up and she refused to put any weight on one of her front paws. And I was panicking at this point. I was thinking, it's a broken bone. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get her home? Um, we were at a park near my house that, and we had walked there. So I didn't have a vehicle with me. It was early in the morning. There was barely anyone in the park. Um, and so I actually had to carry Bailey about 200 feet across the park, um, which was a lot for me. She's about 65 pounds. And I had to leave her there with um, someone that I saw every single day at the park, I had to ask them, you know, can you watch my dog while I run home and get my car because I can't carry her all the way home. Um, Bailey couldn't make it home without getting in the vehicle. She was not able to take more than 10 steps at a time and even that, um, you could tell she was in pain while she was hopping. And I'm not strong enough to carry her all the way home. So thankfully that person was very kind and watched over her while I ran full speed as fast as I could home with the puppy to get the car. Um, and I brought her home, did a full inspection, and all I knew is that she, she was in pain on that one front leg. Um, I couldn't figure out where exactly the issue was. Was it in her paw? Was it in her shoulder? She, she was in too much pain to let me inspect her. And that's a really big red flag for us. Um, typically, Bailey, when I'm checking her for injury, if anything happens, um, she lets me do whatever I need to do to check her. And so as soon as they opened, 8 a.m. on the dot, I was on the phone with my vet's office trying to explain that um, she wasn't putting any weight on the paw, what had happened. Bailey wasn't even able to put to balance her weight to go to the bathroom. So that was another one of my concerns. If she can't balance her weight to go to the bathroom, how is she supposed to, you know, be okay until I can take her into the vet? Um, thankfully, our vet was able to squeeze us in for a same day appointment. They inspected her immediately. 
um, identified the elbow as the issue and then took some x-rays while they were at it. Um, they found out that she has a chip out of one of her elbows. Uh, they don't believe that it was a new injury from playing with the puppy. Um, they believe that it was an old injury that somehow was um, aggravated by the play. And I have no idea how she had a chip out of her elbow. I got her when she was about a year and a half, so it's possible it could have happened before then. Um, I can't think of any way that she would have hurt her elbow that bad um, while I've been her owner. She's never had any sort of major injury until that, and it was terrifying. Um, it was very scary. And so the vet told us that it's possible she'll need surgery. We don't know where the fragment of the elbow is. It could have just been reabsorbed into her body somehow, um, which I don't understand how that works, or it could still be in there causing additional damage. They sent us home with pain meds. They told us to keep her on crate rest for at least a week and then after another week allow her to kind of move around the house but no jumping on the bed, no jumping on the couch, no significant movement um, and, and to really let her rest and heal. And if after two weeks she wasn't improved and she was still limping, we would need to go to a specialist to see if she needed a surgery. So she was completely out for two weeks and then I didn't bring her back 100%. Um, I actually let her take a full month off without coming into work. After the two weeks, we did start to slowly increase her physical activity um, to see how that elbow would do with increased activity. And then after a month, um, she came in sparingly to work, not fully. Eventually, uh, that elbow injury healed and she came back to work almost full time um, to start to retire her because I knew that was coming, um, I only started taking her to work three days a week. And so I would spread those days out and, and make sure that she had ample rest in between. And I knew that retirement was right around the corner. So as I said before, I was already planning on Bailey retiring. So I was already um, looking into breeders for her successor and where I would get that puppy. And Thankfully, um, the timing worked out that there was a nine-month-old puppy available from a breeder that um, has very good lines, very good success with service work um, and the health of their dogs. And so they had a nine-month-old puppy um, that was a really good fit for our home. Um, very fun personality. You all will meet him in a future video. So at this point, we had Bailey, who was already starting to retire in the house. We had the puppy that I was puppy raising for my brother and then we brought home this other nine month old puppy. So our house was very chaotic but lots of fun. Um, we supervised play very closely with all of them to make sure that there were no more injuries, that Bailey's elbow wouldn't be um, aggravated at all and that she could continue to you know be happy and healthy. And at some point we started to see this bump on her paw on one of her toes. So we took Bailey into the vet to get the, her paw checked out to see what's going on because it wasn't healing. Um, it wasn't necessarily irritating her. It didn't seem to bug her, um, but it was getting larger and it wasn't healing. Um, and so we took her into the vet and the vet took one look at it and said, that's a tumor on her toe. And my brain just shut off. <laughs> I just start crying in the vet's office as the vet's explaining to me that um, digit tumors, so toe tumors, are often extremely malignant in dogs and they're typically very bad signs. And so we needed to be prepared um, for the worst and that she likely was going to need to at least get her toe amputated. And so you know, obviously I'm freaking out here. Um, at this point, I had reduced Bailey's work to two days a week um, because I was trying to ease her into retirement and I was seeing that she was starting to slow down. And so that was an instant, she's going to be pulled from work immediately. I started asking the vet, what does this mean? How do we know what kind of cancer it is? Um, what are we going to do? And so they took, um, a slide 
um, and pressed it up against the, the tumor and looked at it under a microscope and identified the type of tumor that it was, which was a benign tumor um, or likely to be benign. But it was still getting bigger. It was ulcerating, which means it wasn't healing. It wasn't scabbing over properly. Um, and the vet still said, we need to have this removed. And the only way to remove it because of the location is to amputate the whole toe. My entire world was just shaken. Um, Bailey means so much to me and I didn't know what this meant. I didn't know, um, you know, what we would do. I, uh, amputating a toe, my vet was acting like it was just not a big deal. She does this all the time. It's, you know, it'll be cool. Everything will be okay. And that that is a major surgery to me. It's an amputation. It's an entire, you know, digit, an entire piece of Bailey that they would need to cut off and Bailey would need to heal from. And it's on her foot. So how do you recover from that? So obviously, as soon as we found out that Bailey had a tumor, we pulled her from work completely. Um, even though it wasn't really bothering her, we didn't want any risk of her being more injured or more stressed out or working impacting her health. And so we pulled her from work completely. Um, about two months after her surgery is when they said she could return to work um, and return to just whatever her normal routine was from before the surgery. Um, we waited three months before I tried to bring her back to work. My initial plan to bring Bailey back to work was only to have her working one day a week um, because she was on the way to retirement anyways. Um, and once she came back twice, I decided that really I wanted to fully retire her from coming back to the office. Um, and this was pretty difficult going from having a service dog every single day with me to help me through my day-to-day -day life and help me stay independent to um, basically not having a service dog for months was very difficult. Um, but what was more difficult was watching Bailey struggle um, through her surgery and, and through those health issues. And at that point, you could tell that she wanted to come back to work, but she didn't enjoy the office environment. Um, some of the finer points of her training needed some touch up, needed some work. And with how close she was to retirement and me working on training her successor already, it didn't seem worth it to continue to have her in the office at all. Um, so I fully retired her from coming to the office with me and now she only works very occasionally coming out on errands with me. Um, she's still enjoying those when she gets a chance to and will be very excited to be working and tasking and she's also working at home. So she's not 100% retired, but she is mostly retired at this point. Um, and my new service dog is not fully up to training yet. So we are still working on bringing him um, up to speed on his training and tasking. I'll have a whole separate video on Bailey's toe amputation and how she recovered, but please know that she is thriving now. She is enjoying her mostly retired life, lounging on the couch, just hanging out, playing, um, and just having a good time. And she's earned this retirement um, and she is doing well and is healthy and happy. So that's the gist of why Bailey is retiring. She had two major health scares within nine months and it was just a lot for our family to handle, but she is doing great now. She bounced back from surgery faster than I ever thought she would. Um, and soon you all will meet my new service dog in training. Um, and I'm very excited for you all to meet him. So thanks so much for watching and for joining us on this crazy journey. Um, it has been a wild ride this last year and we will see you next time. Bye everyone.